Just ask yourself one question. What's wrong with living a frugal and saintly life? Why not living a frugal and saintly life? The virtuous life, the life without guilt, the food without blood, to live without costing the earth and all lives thereof. Just put down those meat. A simple change of diet can minimize so much dependency, can stop so much of suffering, and can save the whole planet. Please continue watching to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic. Aulaxis, also known as Vietnamese, Bulgarian, Chinese, Croatian, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Russian, Sinhalese, Spanish, and Thai. Salam hangat, para pemisa yang mempesona, nama saya Umi dari Medan, di Indonesia yang kaya budaya. Sebagai kepulauan terbesar di dunia, Indonesia terdiri dari 17.508 pulau yang terbentang antara benua Asia dan Australia. Sebagai kepulauan pasar rempah-rempah, Indonesia adalah negara berpenduduk terbanyak keempat di dunia. Mengelilingi ribuan pulau kecil dengan garis pantai lebih dari 80.000 km. Laut tropis Indonesia yang hangat juga memiliki tingkat keanekaragaman hayati yang tinggi. Disertai berbagai ekosistem yang meliputi pantai, gumuk pasir, muara, hutan bakau, terumbu karang, hamparan rumput laut, hamparan lumpur pantai, dataran pasang surut, hamparan ganggang, dan ekosistem pulau kecil. Dengan jumlah pulaunya yang besar, Tidaklah mengejutkan bila di Indonesia terdapat kira-kira 300 kelompok etnis masing-masing dengan tradisi yang unik dan indah yang berkontribusi pada kebudayaan modern Indonesia yang dinamis. Maha Guru Ching Hai memiliki kasih yang besar kepada rakyat Indonesia dan telah percerama di negeri yang mulia ini. Tahun 2014, beliau mengirim surat kepada yang mulia Joko Widodo untuk memberi ucapan selamat karena terpilih sebagai Presiden Indonesia. Beliau mengakhiri surat hangatnya kepada yang mulia dengan menyatakan dengan semua harapan terbaik saya, semoga surga memberkati Anda dan rakyat Indonesia yang baik hati. Satu kegembiraan untuk bercerita pada Anda sekilas tentang Indonesia yang memukau. Kami berdoa agar Tuhan membawa kedamaian abadi dan sukacita ke dalam hidup Anda. Selama lebih dari 
tiga dekade, Maha Guru Qinghai telah menerangi dunia kita dengan ajaran ilahi beliau. Seorang guru yang tercerahkan sepenuhnya, beliau mengajarkan metode Kuan Yin kepada mereka yang ingin dengan segera menemukan hakikat Tuhan di dalam batin agar dalam satu masa kehidupan bisa mencapai kebebasan abadi dari sirkus kelahiran kembali. Metode Kuan Yin telah dilatih oleh semua guru tercerahkan seperti Buddha, Yesus Kristus, Nabi Muhammad, Damai Besertanya, dan Guru Nana. Beliau menekankan bahwa jika kita selalu mengingat Tuhan, memberi pelayanan tanpa pamri kepada pihak lain, dan mengikuti hukum alam semesta, kita akan mencapai potensi tertinggi kita sebagai manusia dan benar-benar memahami tujuan kita berada di bumi. Maha Guru Qinghai adalah sebuah teladan hidup yang luar biasa tentang welas asi yang secara teratur memberikan bantuan materi dan finansial dan juga cinta kasih kepada para pengungsi Tuna Wisma korban bencana alam, dan bantuan lainnya yang diperlukan. Di tahun 2006, beliau menerima penghargaan Gusi Perdamaian yang dianggap sebagai penghargaan Nobel Perdamaian dari Timur dan telah dianugerahi selama bertahun-tahun dengan banyak penghargaan lain dan pujian atas tindakan kedermawanan dan kemanusiaan beliau yang luar biasa. Menjadi suara yang bisa diandalkan bagi sahabat satwa kita yang elok, beliau mempropagandakan pola makan nabati yang penuh kasih dan damai, serta memimpikan terbangkitnya kesadaran manusia akan kesakralan semua kehidupan dunia vegan sepenuhnya yang tentram dan mulia di mana hewan dan manusia hidup dalam keharmonisan yang membahagiakan. Prakarsa beliau untuk menyebarkan tren vegan melalui berbagai cara dan mencakup pembagian selebaran cara hidup alternatif, jaringan restoran vegan internasional Loving Heart, Supreme Master Television, dan juga secara teratur berbicara kepada pemerintah yang berpengaruh dan pemimpin-pemimpin media serta berpartisipasi dalam konferensi televisi mengenai perubahan iklim. Yang kita sadari ataupun tidak, upaya-upaya beliau telah memiliki pengaruh besar terhadap kesadaran global tentang gaya hidup yang ramah terhadap hewan dan bagaimana cara penuh kebajikan ini bisa menghadirkan perdamaian yang langgeng di antara bangsa-bangsa sambil menyelamatkan planet kita dari perubahan iklim. Selama bertahun-tahun, Maha Guru Qinghai telah ke berbagai penjuru dunia, dari Amerika ke Afrika, dari Eropa ke Oseania, dan mengadakan ratusan ceramah kepada masyarakat umum dan murid-murid beliau mengenai berbagai topik spiritual. Hari ini kita terberkahi untuk bisa menghadirkan salah satu ceramah yang berwawasan berjudul Berhematlah, itu dimulai dari meja kita. Kutipan dari ceramah Maha Guru Qinghai, bagian kedua dari dua seri di acara antara guru dan murid yang disampaikan dalam bahasa Inggris. When do you think humankind came to this point of being so destructive to the nature? Uh, I'm asking myself mm. because uh, hmm, uh, how come we didn't see it earlier? Because there are some nations like Aboriginal people in Australia or Native Americans in yes. America that they knew it all the way. Yes, yes. Not 200 years ago. Yes. Um, Native American elders said, if you will go this way, yes. this is going to be the consequence. Yes. And they knew 
why we didn't, why, ah. why Western civilization didn't know these things? Why were we so blind? You see, because the so-called civilization developed too fast and they feel superior. They don't listen to the so-called elders, mm -hmm. what you mentioned. Mm -hmm. yeah? The one that look very simple, live simple, and so the so-called civilized and developed people thinking that we're powerful. And the native elders don't know anything because they live so simple. We don't listen. Yeah, and not only we don't listen now, we don't listen to Jesus, Buddha, they always tell us the whole Bible, everywhere you can find, okay, don't eat meat, don't kill animals, don't destroy nature, mm -hmm. respect all creatures of God, because they're all from God. Mm -hmm. Same Buddhism, same Christians, same Islam, same Jainism, same Sikhism, all say protect nature, you know, protect animals. Yes, for example, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, even if the Native American, for example, if they have to take something from nature, they do appreciate, respect, and try to replace it somehow. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. and not completely destroying it mass scale, like mostly what we do right now. Mm -hmm. so we have to change quick. But uh, I'm just talking to you. <laughs> I don't know how about the mass outside. And of course, uh, my people, they have television, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. so whoever wants to, to listen can listen everywhere in every corner of the world mm -hmm. because we have internet uh, mm -hmm. TV, yes? Mm -hmm. But that's all we can do, yeah? And we also uh, print leaflet, flyers, mm -hmm. to uh, tell people that it's really happening. Please mm -hmm. take care, please do something. And that's all in our power to can do now. You see, it's up to humans to choose, mm -hmm. to decide. And we should decide to live. We should decide that we can do anything at all in our power to preserve our lives on the planet. Because it's not just one life, two lives. It's just not my life, your life is the life of the children and the next generation. Mm -hmm. Just to have just a beautiful planet and we destroy it is very, very pitiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, we have to decide a different way. We have to walk in a different way. That's it. We have to decide that, okay, we're going to be courageous. We do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't take much. Just to be vegetarian. Mm -hmm. Just to plant a couple of trees, each person. Mm -hmm. Just to use a sustainable, free energy. That's all there is. Mm -hmm. Three simple steps. Mm -hmm. Refrain from animals, you know. Of course, I mean also killing by war, you know. So, uh, so it's only very simple. Refrain from killing each other and animals, yeah? Mm -hmm. For any reason, for food, for profit, for gain, for anything at all. Mm -hmm. Refrain from killing. Use, uh, produce and use sustainable energy. Plant trees. Mm -hmm. Yes. We can have everything. We just do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not like we have to do a big deal stuff. No. Very simple. The sun is there for us to use forever. The wind is there forever. Mm -hmm. The waves in the ocean, you can use forever. Mm -hmm. It will never be finished. Yeah? Compared to other energy that maybe you have today, you don't have tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The sun, you don't have to. Nobody can possess the sun. Mm -hmm. Nobody can stop you from using it. So very simple, eh? Mm -hmm. Vegetarian, sustainable energy, plant trees. And of course, we pray, eh? We pray so that we'll be strong, that heaven will help us, yeah, to choose the right way. Mm -hmm. That's all. Four, solution. Very easy. Everybody can do it. Don't you think? Sure. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. I think even if, if not just for the planet, to save the planet, but we should be more uh, compassionate, no? The animals so helpless and small. We're big and powerful and we can use all the product to eat and to, to live. We don't have to kill the weak and helpless just to survive. And now that our planet even depends on it, according to UN report, mm -hmm. so we, um, so more we must do it. Mm -hmm. It's time. And you look everywhere, huh? mad cow disease, mass cancelling of cow meat in the United States, mm -hmm. bird flu, blue tongue disease, uh, you know, um, 
salmonella, fish mercury, raisin, everywhere. Mm. Animals is not good for us, even healthy, health-wise speaking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everywhere is a warning sign. And uh, the elder have talked about that long ago already. Why do they tell you to protect the environment? Why do they tell you don't cut trees, don't destroy this? Because they want to protect environment, not because they don't want you to cut it or anything like that. Not because they want to dictate you, mm -hmm. not because they don't know anything. They do know a lot of things. The elder, like uh, American tribe, they know many things. Mm -hmm. Not many listen, that's the thing. No. <laughs> yes, the people, they think they're civilized. Yeah. And they think the people who live simple in a tent and don't build houses and all that, they mean they're, they're not civilized. No, no, they are civilized. That's why they're frugal. Mm. They live simple, so they don't destroy nature. Mm. So that they can have more of nature for a long time to come. Not just quickly cut, cut, tree, build everything, and take everything, and then uh, we, we finished. Mm -hmm. See? They're just simple because they're wise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they live in the tent because they're too noble inside. Mm -hmm. They don't want to destroy more than what they need. Mm -hmm. In all the scripture, it says, take what you need but no more than that. Mm -hmm. That's what the elders, the key. they do. Yeah. That's why they live simple. Mm -hmm. Many wise people, they live simple. We can have everything. Just mm -hmm. some, some are too greedy, and that's how we arrive as what we are today. Mm -hmm. So the situation now is like we are spending much, 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 much more than we earn. It's like if you're having a job, you earn only $1,000, and you spend like 10000 20000 or even $100,000. That's the situation we are in right now. So you ask me whether the earth will survive. I say yes, maybe the earth may survive some part, but not the living beings on it. I have repeated many times that the root cause of our present predicament is animal product dependent lifestyle. We consume too much animal products, we eat too much meat, we kill too many innocent beings. We are addicted to this kind of diet, a meat diet, and this is the main cause of our problem. The main cause of the danger of our survival right now is the cause from meat diet. The more we stick to the meat diet, the more we need oil and other fuel, resulting in even more shortage in all necessities. As you have mentioned, even the solar system also consumes a lot of electricity right now to produce, and the capability has not reached the uh, level that we wanted it to reach. We spend a lot also energy to produce this solar system, and yet it's not satisfactorily the way we want. So I suggest only one thing, just to be veg, be vegetarian, choose a vegetarian diet, then all will cool down. All disaster will disappear. We will see how simple and happy life can be, and how we will think clearly, and how our heart will be more open, more blissful. We can understand many more things than we have up to now, and that we really can live with much far less than what we thought possible, and still be happy survive, satisfy, and healthy. Just ask yourself one question. What's wrong with living a frugal and saintly life? Why not living a frugal and saintly life? The virtuous life, the life without guilt, the food without blood, to live without costing the earth and all lives thereof. Just put down those meat. A simple change of diet can minimize so much dependency, can stop so much of suffering, 
and can save the whole planet. Oh God, how easy to stop global warming if we just change to animal-free diet, change to vegetarian lifestyle. Then we will have the chance to keep this home that we so love, also for our future children. Supreme Master, this month um, in August in Ireland, there was a salmonella scare uh, and there was a nationwide recall of meat products from one of the country's biggest sandwich chains. In fact, these recalls seem to be coming more and more frequent. We read about them almost every day. Somewhere in the world, meat is being recalled due to E. coli or salmonella poisoning or some other disease. It seems that if we eat meat, it's not only affecting the environment, but we're actually taking risks with our own health. Why do you feel that we're seeing more and more of these recalls? Well, madam, uh, clearly it is a warning sign, huh? As heaven's last resource to sound an alarming bells, we must listen. And now, the animals, they are also trying to help waking up human race by sacrificing their lives. Anyone who can communicate with the animals by telepathy would uh, confirm my view on this. Now, please, if anyone is listening, we must stop all act of harming and killing, hurting humans or other species. Stop damaging the environment and live simple life, as simple as possible, according to our resources. More in tune with nature. Live and let all live so that our lives may be spared and blessed with happiness. Master, next question is from Jose Luis Perez Alvela Veraum, and he's not here today. He is a vegan doctor and nutritionist. Would like to ask you the next question. How can we make our life much simpler and harmonious despite all the material things around us? How? <laughs> yes. It's a very noble-minded question. I agree with him. Uh, simple living and high thinking are the secrets to a long and happy life. One of the best ways to bring simplicity into our lives, uh, he's already doing in choosing the vegan diet. I'm very happy to see that. Living without killing or bringing harm to other beings can restore harmony and health to yourself and the world around us faster than most anything else, especially for such a busy life as uh, his, Dr. Berum, where caring for others is a part of his uh, profession. The love and compassion of the animal-free a vegan diet gives you more strength, patience, and understanding. Another way to cultivate simplicity is to spend time also in the tranquility of nature or create a natural environment at home where we can go for peace and quiet. Reading mind uplifting books such as spiritual scriptures as well as practicing meditation are also good ways to remind ourselves that we truly don't need much to be happy and live a contented, peaceful life. People uh, who meditate, according to scientific research conducted in the U.S. on meditation, uh, no matter what religion they came from, or even if uh, they don't think they believe in God, meditation is still beneficial and in fact has been found to help in remaining calm and serene, as well as giving an optimistic outlook on life. Being vegan, as uh, Dr. Beron is, also helps considerably in benefiting from meditation, because he already purified his system by removing toxic meat and animal products from his diet. 
So the combination of practices like uh, meditation along with daily harmonious living through the vegan diet will lead to a simpler life with fewer material desires but still full of happiness and contentment. Dear Supreme Master Ching Hai, climate change brings new question to the modern society. From economic development, the increasing standards of living to luxurious ways of living even for daily activity compared to the earlier ages. All these are now challenged once again by the catastrophic climate change that is believed to be caused by human activity. One phenomenon that is also very contributive to a GHG emission to the atmosphere is the rapid increase in global population. Also as one of the consequences of increased living standard, the question is, how should we human being develop is there or will there be a limit for this development? How should the society be built? Thank you, Master. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. It is true that we must be careful of our way of life and try to be more frugal and protective of our precious resources. We should not lose ourselves in the material aspects of life without paying attention to our moral standards and spiritual development as well. This is important also, even more important than material development. Or else we will be in trouble sooner or later. We might even lose everything, including our material development, our lives and our planet like we are in the fact facing now. I'm glad to see that uh, you walk the talk because you are a uh, vegan. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, the animals, thank you. And you look so handsome and healthy. Can you stand up and let everybody look at you, turn around? <laughs> he really look handsome, yes. Look at him, huh? Uh, please don't be shy. You must save the, the animal at all costs. Now, if we, the human race, develop as a vegan society, and better yet, a spiritual vegan society, there will be no limit to our material development. Because then, sir, we will have the wisdom and the love to propel us on a balanced, straight course of the future, bright future for our planet, our children. If we have the spiritual eye, we will find that past civilizations, both on Earth and other planets, sometimes developed too quickly in the uh, technological sense, but the spiritual development, their store of love was low or empty. And what we see, we see the pattern is that no society can last long if they refuse to sustain the lives of their own members and fellow beings. I mean, include all the beings like animals and trees. Or if they destroy the environment they live in, then that society cannot live long. We can see that also in historical record. Just like the proverb that says, the frog does not drink up all the water in the pond in which he lives, because he needs the water, see? So we cannot destroy the environment and live in it as well. It is not the rapid increase in global population that is the problem, sir. It might contribute, but a little bit. We had enough to sustain everybody, more than that. We have enough food to feed the world, twice over. Right now even, if we don't feed all the food to the animals. Yes, you know that. <laughs> the real problem is our meat consumption, the tendency of mass killing 
that we have made a part of our lives and we look at it as a normal life. It is not normal. It's not normal that we cause suffering to others who has feeling and who shed red blood and call that a food or earn a living. We cannot earn a living or sustain a living by death. Meat consumption is the way of not just cruelty, but of waste on unimaginable gross scale. To illustrate, let's compare a meat eater to a vegan. One meat eater requires two hectares, that's four acres of land, to support him. But that same two hectares or four acres of land could support the healthy lifestyle of 80 vegan. Huh? Compare that. Now, let's look at water. A meat eater uses up 15,000 liters of water per day because of the meat diet, which is 15 times as much water as a vegan would use. Because we use a lot of water to raise cattle and to wash them, to clean them, etc and to water the crops that feed the animals as well. So we use a lot of water just for one piece of meat. Now, there is also a dramatic difference in terms of emissions from the diet. The meat-based diet's emissions is equivalent to driving a car 4,758 kilometers. That is 17 times the emissions for an organic vegan diet which is equivalent to only 281 kilometers. In other words, an organic vegan diet produces 94% less emissions than a meat-based diet. 94% less emission. Huh? So if we just choose a vegan diet, we will save the world in no time. 94% less pollution emission from a vegan diet compared to a meat diet. Huh? Now, vegans also save immeasurable pollution costs, energy costs, resource costs, disease treatment costs, global warming costs, tax costs, plus the emotional costs related to the sorrow and suffering of the people. That is much more than money or anything we can imagine of. Now add it together, the impact of a meat-eating population is just unimaginably huge and wrong. Whereas the impact of a vegan population always comes out to be a tiny fraction of the meat-eater's terrible impact. So if we don't eliminate meat, consumption, we could never reach even a low, low impact on the environment, no matter what else we do. We must stop the most inefficient, unsustainable, lives-destroying practice of murdering animals and stop it now. Stop it yesterday. The animal meat industry has to go be it animals from the air, the land, or the sea. Can we imagine, huh? The animals, they just fly in the air. They don't even touch us. They don't do anything to us. We shoot them down. We trap them, drag them home, and eat. We call that food. The fish swimming in the sea, mind his own business. Do nothing harm to us, ever. Don't even know us, don't even see us. We net them up, suffocate them, drag them to our table, and we call that food. That fish might have a lot of babies waiting for him. That bird might have a lot of babies waiting for her. And the land animals, they have not been so many. It's just we breed them. Imagine if we are in the position of that confined pig or chain cows or suffocating chickens or ducks in overcrowded animal factory. Imagine it's us, then you understand what I'm talking about. We have to stop all this cruelty. 
because we're civilized human people. We are civilized. We are educated. We are religious. We have been taught by all the greatest prophets since times immemorial to be a dignified human being. So we have to stop all this mass murdering the animals from air, from land, or from sea, from anywhere at all. That's the only way we can and should develop sustainably for our children and grandchildren and future generations. That's the only way we should develop. And after all, the vegan way of building society is the most befitting to the human standard of compassion. It is truly the way of most peaceful, paradise-like, children of God-like civilizations, because we save lives. Not only we save the animals, we save our lives, we save the lives of the world, of the people in the world. Then we are heroes. The planets that were saved from destruction, like Venus, were saved because their societies became vegan. I mean the one that are saved, that I mentioned there are four Venuses, only two of them are saved because their societies became vegan. The other two Venus were destroyed. One is completely gone, one is uh, boiling hot, uninhabitable, because they have not been vegan. The two Venus are saved because they have become vegan. Many planets that did not survive, like Mars, perished with meat still in their mouth, between their teeth. So it is up to us, sir. So if we alone are vegan, we ourselves will change, at least. And if there are enough of us, our society will change. You know how it changed your life, yes? The vegan diet. We become smarter, more sensitive, more compassionate, more uh, considerate to other people and environment and animals around us. We became a different person. <laughs> And we are happy to become so different, yes. If everyone in the society become vegan, we will develop in an incredible way as a whole planet in the universe. And that time there will be no limit to our spiritual development and even our social, technological, material development once we turn to our compassionate, God-like nature. Everything else will naturally be built on this new foundation and the correct foundation, the only foundation we should have, of loving kindness. And the society will develop itself and manage itself accordingly in peace, wisdom, compassion, and dignified coexistence among our living beings. Thank you, Mr. Harianto. Please advise your clients <laughs> to do the same. All information concerning the scientific evidence of climate change and its solution is in Supreme Master Ching Hai's book, From Crisis to Peace, free to download at crisistopeace.org. yang lembut, kami menghargai kebersamaan Anda dalam episode hari ini yang berjudul Berhematlah, itu dimulai dari meja kita. Kutipan dari ceramah Mahaguru Singhai, bagian kedua dari dua seri di acara antara guru dan murid. Tetaplah di Supreme Master Television untuk acara positif lainnya akan hadir selanjutnya Biksu-Biksu Kuba dan Desa-Desa Vegetarian di Thailand Utara dalam acara Kata-Kata Bijak. Semoga kekuatan ilahi dalam batin membawa hidup Anda pada realita yang mencerahkan. May the divine power within transcends your life 
into an awakening reality. For more details, please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash BMD.